Okay, more excitement. Here's my lower parts kit, it's DPMS. I'm a little frustrated because I ordered a little gunsmithing kit that had a brass hammer and some other things like that to help me put this in because I know there are, some, there are some pins that have to be tapped in. So today is a good day to do this. So I'm just going to use what I have. I have some punches here. I'm hoping that I can use some tape on the pins to keep them from getting scratched up. I have my needle nose pliers, a hammer that's too big. That's a framing hammer. <laughs> it's my 32 year old <laughs> framing hammer that I've retired. I've got an assortment of screwdrivers here. Big screwdriver, little screwdriver, little tiny screwdriver, and uh, just a mallet, a rubber mallet that needs to be retired too maybe. But I'm gonna try to do this. Uh, this is my first time, so I may have to edit some of this junk out of it. We'll see how it goes. And of course, this is part of the uh, funky AR build, and uh, I'll insert some clips as we go along of the Woodstock set and all that. So let me get this out of the package and the parts uh, list. Go over that. Take a look at this diagram on the back, and uh, see if I can't figure this out. Good Lord, this reminds me of when I was a kid. Me and my brother used to take stuff apart and we couldn't get it put back together again. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> they should have put these in order of installation. <laughs> well, gotta start somewhere. Okay, so the first thing I am told we are to do is to put our magazine catch assembly in and for that we have our magazine catch our mag magazine catch spring and our magazine catch button and this seems to be a fairly easy thing to do which we will find out right now Let's maybe do it from this angle see if I can get it started a little better Okay, so I put my magazine catch in here. And I've got my magazine catch spring. And my magazine catch button. I'm gonna to try to get that started. So I've got that started. So now what I wanna do is to press that into that opening. What I've done is I've just taken one of my punches and I've wrapped tape around the end of it. So I'm going to take this, push that in, like so. Just rotate this. Oops, I went too far. Look how far, wow. I went way too far. I didn't realize it would go that far. Okay, so you just want that flush with the button. That looks pretty good. And I did it without scratching the receiver. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is put the trigger guard on. There's our trigger guard, the little spring-loaded detent there. What I've got here is just some leather that I found uh, just laying around here. I, I do some leather work too. I'm going to lay that underneath to support that. So I'm going to get this in place and depress our little detent. There, that's easy to put in. Now I'm going to do a no-no here. I'm going to use a big hammer <laughs> to get that started. The problem here is I'm using this crappy table 
that doesn't have a very good backing on it. Okay, so now I'm going to put the uh, bolt catch in. And the first thing I have to do is get this little pin started. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. You really need a, a vise mounted on a bench to do, to do this. I thought I'd try to press this thing in with a C-clamp or whatever. That's just not working. So I finally got Alex to hold this while I tapped and got that uh, roll pin started. And you got to be real careful. These aluminum receivers are soft. You can all, I don't know if you can see. I've already kind of nicked it there. But I'm thinking about doing a Duracoat job on this anyway. So we'll see how it turns out. Now these little springs are a little bit hard. They were for me. Oh Jesus. God, I hope I didn't just lose it. Okay, that was close. I almost lost it. <laughs> but anyway, there are two little springs that are similar here. The reason I'm putting this in my video is because I haven't seen it in any, any others. They're similar, but one is wound a little bit tighter than the other. It's the one that's wound a little bit tighter also, this one seems to have a little bit of a funnel on it. I don't know if you can see it. So, anyway, I'm going to put that other one aside. And then here is the bolt catch buffer thingy. Thingamabob. Watch it roll off and I'll lose it again. And you can see here on this diagram, this bolt catch spring is a, a little different looking. And they've even tried to show this... Uh, Disconnector spring uh, is different in the diagram. So anyway, we're going to drop our spring down in there where it goes, and we're going to put our little buffer, bolt catch buffer thingy in there. This is where where it's going to get tricky for me because I don't have the vise set up, and then I'm going to try to drop the bolt catch itself in there okay and what I did was and you can try this too I drove the roll pin in there just far enough I'm gonna put my finger over it in case it pops out but I drove that pin in just far enough so that it would catch so that the the bolt catch would go in but it would hook on the on the pin Really what you need to do is put this in a vise. I'm just being lazy here. I've got it started now so I don't really have to worry about it too much. You can do this without a vise, but it is really difficult. This table that I'm working on is one of these resin tables and you, you think it's sturdy until you start pounding on it with a hammer. I was really surprised that that went in as far as it did. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so in this step we're going to put the pivot pin in, which is the longer of the two large pins. You can see here if I can get them side by side. And it, the pivot pin also has this little flat spot on it. And it's also long enough uh, to go through here and fit on that little flat area. Okay, so what we're going to do first is put our spring in. These are a little bit obvious because they're going to fit. <laughs> you know, if I were if I were to try to put place this other spring in, it's the diameter's much larger, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is try to place this uh, detent uh, pin. Get it started. Oh, Jesus, mother. <laughs> Time out. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> it slipped out of my pliers and it went shooting across the room. And of course, uh, that would be disastrous uh, if you couldn't find it. So now I've got to figure out a way to do this without losing it again. So I think what I'm going to do is start it and have my knife ready. To push it back. Now you'll just take that uh, pivot pin 
and get it started. There we go. Sorry if I blocked your view, but basically what I did, did was just push that detent pin in far enough to get this started. Figures. Okay, this is going to be one of those little things that could probably use some graphite up in there because I had a hard time once I got that detent in place. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I had to... Okay, once you get it going, I had to pound that thing back with a mallet. Okay, okay, of course it just comes back to there. All right, well that's working good now. Okay, so now we're going to put our trigger in. There's our trigger spring. See how it's wrapped around it. And that will go in. Actually, we want to put our disconnect spring, disconnector spring in first. Just like that. And that's that little spring that has this sort of funnel shaped. I think I put it in upside down. Let's see here. Yeah, that that um, little disconnector spring has a sort of a funnel shape, and you put the funnel side down, and it keeps it holds it in there. So now we're going to put our uh, disconnector on. It hooks over the spring just like that, and you'll line up those holes and drop it in. Don't drop it place it in. <laughs> I'm going to actually put my finger down here and let it to keep it from dropping. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of hold it in place while we get our pin started. Just kind of work it in there until you feel it going through. And this is where your rubber mallet will come into play. There we go. Next, we have our hammer with our hammer spring. You can see how that kind of goes there. This little part comes in on the hooked side of the hammer. And then that will go in our receiver like this. And the, the two legs of the spring will hook over or lay on top of the uh, detent spring or the pin for the trigger, the trigger pin. And then you just push this down. If I can get my fat hands out of the way to where it lines up with that hole. It's a little bit tough. So I can get the persuader over here. So I got that started. Looks like I have to push down a little bit just to get it lined up with the other side. That gum it. Has to be kind of twisted around a little bit. Get it lined up. There we go. I had to twist it to get it lined up with, on the, with this hole on this side. Oh, now I still got to twist it. There we go. There we go. That dirt on it. Looking good. So there's our hammer cocked. Now I'm not going to, I'm going to pull the trigger, but I'm not going to let it fly here. So cocked. Pull the trigger. Cocked. Pull the trigger. Okay, so now we're going to put on our safety, our selector, and our grip. Notice the beautiful wood grip. I'll show a better shot of that in a minute. So you want to take your selector detent pin, which is a little pin that has a point on one end of the, actually it looks like a small bullet, and put it with the point going down into the receiver that way so that the point 
will act as the detent. This parts kit came with this little wimpy screw. Well, this is one thing you got to put up with on the wood stock sets is this hole is only drilled out a certain distance. So I had to actually go to Ace Hardware and get a long bolt. That's uh, This is quarter inch by 28. The, the thread is uh, 28 uh, threads per inch. So if you, if you ever have to deal with this like I'm having to do. The other thing I had to do too was since there's no room to get a socket in here, when I changed this bolt, I had to take my grinder and put a slot in it so I could actually use a screwdriver to put it in. I don't know if you can see that or not. So now what I'm going to do is just drop that in. You can see now, now I've got threads hanging out where I didn't before. So what you're going to do is put your detent in, um, your selector detent. You can see it hanging down there and go ahead and put the spring in the grip and slide it in and then get it start then get this long bolt started. Well in your case it won't be a long bolt, but in mine it is. Oh that's gonna look so good. Okay so now we want to get our safety and slide it in get it started and we're going to have to depress that detent down so we take one of my tiny screwdrivers and press that down oh that's a nice tight spring there There we go. That's a that's a strong little spring. <laughs> okay, so we're on fire. Let's switch it to safe. No trigger action. Switch it back to fire. Click. I can't put the tape down pin in yet because I don't have the buffer tube. Uh, for some reason, this kit did not come with one. I suppose it's because I did not order it with one. <laughs> But anyway, this uh, what will happen here is obviously you'll have a, a buffer retainer where this spring will go down into that little hole. The buffer retainer will go in there and that will, you know, push down and the, the buffer tube will, re will retain that there. So anyway, looks like I need to be careful here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this grip. I taped this screw to it just so I wouldn't lose it and I will also uh, take and put my parts my, for now in this little baggie so that I don't lose them okay guys I appreciate you watching the uh, next video will be the upper and I think at this point I'm just going to order the upper receiver and the barrel separate uh, because if I buy it a uh, you know an entire upper it will come with the foregrip and all that and i don't need those so i think at this point i'll build the upper and order a separate barrel and that way i will have understood the entire process it's funny because you really understand how a firearm works when you put it together from scratch and of course you run into problem solving issues uh, with you know your grips if you order custom grips and that sort of thing so it's really fun you know it's been uh, it's been fun so far and uh, I can't wait till uh, I get my next part thanks for watching guys